looking, just having a few people that are still connecting here. You just heard we are going to record this session for folks that may join late. So if you don't want to be on screen, you can um, turn your video off now. All right, can everybody see that okay? Marissa, is that a yes? Yep. Okay, great. So we wanted to get started this evening. We'll we have a few more folks joining, but we wanna to stick to our timeline of six o'clock start here. So we appreciate those that are here. Our agenda for this evening is to first start off by introducing the Project Oceanology staff. We have camp directors and educators, and um, we also have a residential supervisor with us. So you'll have a chance to meet the staff. We're going to share a brief video with you that highlights our facility and our research vessels. We're gonna give you an overview of both our day and our residential camps. We have lots of different camp opportunities. So we wanna highlight those. We'll take a couple of minutes to cover our COVID protocols. And we'll also share some of the resources we have available for camper families. And then of course, we'll open it up to questions at the end. Um, if something comes to mind as we're chatting, feel free to use the chat to put questions there. Um, and we'll give an opportunity for folks to unmute as well. Um, when we get to the question section. So I'll kick off the staff introductions. My name is Callie Sheets. I am one of the camp directors at Project Oceanology. I direct the Marine Science Research Experience Camp. I've been a longtime educator here at Project, Project O for probably about 12 years now. Um, I'm one of the captains and also one of the lifeguards. So I come from a marine science and marine biology and education background. That warm weather that we had this weekend is really getting me excited for summer camp mode. So I'm really excited to get to know your campers this summer. All right, hi everyone. My name is Marissa. Um, I am also one of the educators here at Project Go. Um, I camp direct two different camps. Um, I do ocean camp, which is our residential camp um, some weeks. And when I'm not doing that, I am directing the Ocean Explorer Academy, which is um, a day camp for um, slightly younger students. So I um, grew up in the area. I've been at Project Go for seven years now teaching, but I started off as a camper and a student. Um, and I am just really excited for the summer. I'm ready to do it. Hi, I'm Debbie Sayer. I'm another one of the marine science educators here at Project O. Um, I wear many hats. I'm also a small boat captain and a lifeguard. Um, I am director of Ocean Camp, um, alternating weeks with Marissa, and I'm also the director of our undersea technology camp. I've been here about five years now, um, and I cannot wait for summer to start. We have just the best. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Amy Stockberger. I am also a marine science educator here at Project O, but also the residential supervisor. So I am the staff member along with four summer interns that will be with your campers overnight here. Um, I come from a background of environmental science and education. Um, and so kind of fell in love with Project O when I interned here myself and I've been here ever since. So really looking forward to the summer and meeting your kiddos. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Amanda Fall. I am one of the marine science educators at Project O. Um, I just recently O in the fall, but I did participate as a student in middle school and high school. So I'm really excited to be here now for my first uh, summer camp with Project O. Grew up going to summer camps uh, every year, middle school and high school. So I'm really looking forward to meeting all of your students. Um, I come from a marine science background um, and a family of educators. So I'm really excited to be here and meet everybody in the next few months.
Callie, Callie. I think you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, just saying that I'm going to share the camp video now. Um, it's going to highlight our facility. So hopefully you can hear this. Project Oceanology can't wait to kick off the summer camp season. Let's take a tour of our waterfront facility. Keeping our campers safe and healthy is our number one priority. Campers spend ample time outside in the fresh air each day. We have outdoor classroom spaces, dining areas, and game fields to use on campus. And of course, our floating classrooms, the research vessels in Biolab 2 and in Biolab 3. We spend most of our days out on the water, aboard our boats, and along the beaches and shorelines. If your camper is attending one of our residential camps, Meals are provided by Yukon Dining Services. They are prepared in a Serve Safe certified kitchen located in the Project Oceanology cafeteria. Day campers bring their own lunches and snacks and be prepared to picnic on our adventure of the day. Residential campers will stay in our hostel bunk rooms. Sleeping quarters are arranged for the recommendations from the Connecticut Department of Health. Allowing six feet of space between beds and arranging bunks head to toe. Each floor of the hostel also has two separate bathrooms with sinks, toilets, and showers. Single occupant, gender neutral bathrooms are also available. Last stop on the tour is the pride and joy of Project O, our boats. Both research vessels are fully equipped with science gear to aid our exploration of Long Island Sound. Otter trawl nets, Peterson grab, plankton nets, water quality testing instruments, and so much more. We also have a fleet of Carolina skiffs with flat hulls so we can zip around shallow water ecosystems too. Project Oceanology is dedicated to providing meaningful, hands-on marine science experiences for our campers in the safest way possible. Looking forward to Summer Camp 2022. All right, so um, Debbie, do you wanna talk about our day camps to start? Um, so we have uh, three different uh, day camps. So all of our day camps run from 8.30 to four. Um, the Ocean Explorer Academy, is one of them um, for younger campers. Uh, undersea technology, we actually have uh, two different age groups. And then we also have a partnership camp that we run with um, the Mystic Aquarium. It's really two camps kind of rolled into one uh, where half of the, the campers will spend the, uh, three days at Mystic Aquarium and then come to Project Oceanology for two days, while the other camp is going to spend three days at Project O and then spend two days at Mystic Aquarium. So it's something that we collaborate with the Mystic Aquarium on um, each summer. And so we're excited to be back doing that post pandemic. Um, so those are our three, or uh, I guess three or four, I guess if you want to call it that way, um, day camps. Um, so I'll let Marissa talk about Ocean Explorer Academy uh, since she directs this one. All right, so this year um, we have four different weeks that we're offering Ocean Explorer Academy and every week is slightly different. So each week has a different theme. Um, we've had some campers in the past come to three or four weeks of this camp um, throughout the whole summer and um, they don't normally seem bored. They, there's always something new to do. Um, but every week we are going to be doing some similar activities. So each week we will go out on our EnviroLab. We'll do a trawl to catch animals. We'll look at water quality. Um, and then we'll also use those skiffs you can see in the picture to visit some near shore environments like beaches, marshes, um, rocky intertidal zones. Um, so as you can see each week, the first week we focus more on animals. Um, so we look at how animals are different, um, how they're um, going to be able to survive in their specific habitats. Um, the second week 
eco engineers is um, kind of looking at animals and um, trying to see either how they can inspire engineering ideas or um, how we can be engineers to help our environment. Um, the third week, Hidden Habitats dives into all different sorts of habitats. So like I said before, um, every day we'll visit a different habitat and we'll learn you know, what are some of the great things about living in the habitat and also what are some difficulties that those animals have as well. Uh, the final week um, is art and science. So we'll be doing a little bit of all those activities, but we'll also bring in some, some of that, sorry, that, that art aspect. So we might go out in the fields and collect some items and then make an art project out of it. Or um, we might bring painting um, into the field and paint an animal that we catch. Um, so every day is a little different and every week of Ocean Explorer Academy is also a little different. Uh, so this page just kind of shows a sample of what uh, an average day at OEA would look like. Um, so we are gonna do staggered check-in um, from the car. So we'll be able to do um, a little verbal um, check on how everyone's feeling that day. Um, and then once everybody is at camp, we will head inside, store our gear, talk about what our agenda is for the day. Um, a majority of the, um, so usually we're spending most of our day out in the field in some, some way or another. Um, we go on a boat like every single day and then we'll either eat lunch in the field or if we have the time, we might come back to the building to eat lunch. Um, Usually the afternoon is more of an indoor kind of close to the building activity. Uh, we always try to do some team building and some games as well. And then check out is as well at the car at four o'clock. So uh, Undersea Technology Camp is another day camp um, we have the two different age groups, uh, sort of like a middle school, sixth through eighth grade, um, and high school, ninth through twelfth grade. And so we're able to kind of use um, our anchor as um, the sea perch ROV. So this camp is all about different types of technology that we can use um, in the field to study the marine environment. So center screen, you can see that is the ROV that your camper will be building um, during the week. So we work in groups. Um, and so they're gonna have to engineer solutions to different problems in the environment. So for example, one day they'll uh, revise their design to help um, simulate a cleanup of uh, the Great Pacific garbage patch. Um, another day they'll have to redesign their ROVs to uh, go down to the bottom of the harbor and collect dive rings. Um, so every day is a little bit different, but we're also using our research vessel and um, real authentic technology in the way that we um, study our marine environment. So you can see uh, we have a professional grade um, ROV that the student is using on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we also have students visiting the wheelhouse of the Envir EnviroLab 3 and learning about navigation technology. Um, so we are constantly seeing how we can use technology as a lens to study the marine environment. Um, so here is a breakdown of what a day at SeaTech looks like. Um, again, we'll do the staggered check-in um, between 8.30 and 8.45. And then starting at 9 o'clock, we have our um, bottom retrieval challenge, for example, uh, to get those dive rings off the bottom, sort of simulating um, how ROVs are used by real scientists and engineers um, to salvage or to study something that lives at the bottom of the water. So we're going to design our sea perches, and then we're going to go and try them out right in the harbor. Um, following that, we'll head out into the field. We'll take our skiffs out into the, um, to a local sandy beach, do a cleanup, have a little downtime out on the beach, um, then lunch, and then a little bit more engineering and science in the afternoon before we return and clean up um, and pick up is at four o'clock. Um, so our overnight camps um, are a little bit different, but a lot of uh, similar themes. So ocean camp, I like to think of as sort of our camp that is 
a little bit of everything in marine science. So we have, you know, biological oceanography, we're catching creatures, we are studying waves and physical oceanography, but we're also testing water quality and, and looking into chemical oceanography too. So we're really seeing a little bit of everything in marine science. Um, our marine science research experience is for those students who are really serious about marine science or about research science as a potential future career. Um, students will direct, um, excuse me, they'll design and implement their own research projects over the course of the week and then present the results to uh, project oceanology scientists, to um, their families and to their peers. Um, so Ocean Camp. Um, we have different grade bands. Every week is a different grade band. So usually um, it's not consecutive weeks that you could come for multiple weeks, but you might be able to hit up two different weeks over the course of the summer. Um, and each of these age bands has sort of a different um, lens through which we study marine science. So for example, the, the older age group might be studying, um, you know, different um, technologies that we use to study, um, the way that um, scientists um, dig into a research question. Um, the grades eight through 10 might be studying more about um, how does the abiotic characteristics of the, the water impact the living things that are there. Um, and then the youngest age group is focusing more on like how do adaptations um, allow animals to survive in different environments. Um, so our residential camps um, check-in is on Sunday afternoon and um, check out is on Friday afternoon. So we run Sunday to Friday and they stay overnight in our hostel and we try to spend as much time um, out on um, the water as we can. We try to avoid spending any uh, daylight hours indoors um, unless the weather per, uh, prevents us from going out. Um, in the evening time, our students will have an opportunity to do some lab activities and also some team building and some um, downtime um, with other campers to, to get to know each other and to really bond over what we're doing in marine science. So marine science research experience, um, as Debbie mentioned, it's really for those students who are interested in um, perhaps a career in marine science or really interested in um, research and wanna take a deeper dive into that. And so the way we start off our week is by having some common experiences out in the field together. You can see students pictured here using plankton nets, um, setting up transect lines in the rock major tidal, and then pulling some lobster pots as well. So after some common experiences together, hopefully there's questions that students are thinking about and something's kind of sparking for those campers. And so um, by early in the week, each student or teams of small groups will actually come up with their own research question design an experiment or design some field sampling methods and then get out um, every day to collect some data and then spend some time in the afternoons kind of sharing their experiences, talking about um, what kinds of things they found, kind of troubleshoot for the day. Um, and once we have some data, they'll be working towards um, a presentation. They'll come up with a Google slide deck presentation um, that we'll share with other campers um, and with families as well. And we'll have an open meeting on Friday during pickup. We'll invite families to walk around and see what kind of research students have been working on, um, be able to ask questions and um, really be able to share what they've been doing for the whole week. So this gives you a little uh, idea of what an ocean camp day or a research camp day may look like. Again, we're trying to spend as much time outside and take advantage of those daylight hours as we can. Um, and then you'll see after dinner, we're typically inside working on some kind of um, lab program or having some free time until it's lights out. This is a suggested um, packing list for those campers that are attending overnight. And don't worry, don't try to jot this all down now. Um, we have these resources on our website um, and we'll show you where you can find that too. Um, but the basics, um, if you're coming overnight, you wanna make sure you have um, plenty, of, plenty of clothes to get you through the week. Um, bathing suit and towels, of course, sunscreen. We ask that everybody bring a water bottle so we can refill that throughout the week. 
Um, water shoes are really a must. Um, and we don't really consider flip-flops to be great water shoes. We tend to lose them or they tend to slide off when we're out in the field. Um, Crocs or something like that work good. Even an old pair of sneakers is really great as well. Um, sometimes in the lab, it can get chilly at night. So we do recommend something like a sweatshirt or a light jacket. Um, for residential campers, you need to bring all of your um, sleeping or bedding with you. So that could be sheets and a blanket if you prefer, or it could be something like a sleeping bag. Um, you'll need to bring your toiletries as well. And then we have some suggested items, perhaps sunglasses or a flashlight, a hat, something like that as well. And again, we'll show you where you can find this information on our website. So just to touch upon some of our COVID protocols, again, all of these things are gonna be available in the camper handbook. Um, but these are just some of the highlights. So the COVID vaccine is going to be required for all campers um, who are eligible. And then obviously all of our staff are fully vaccinated um, that will be working with your kids. Um, in terms of COVID testing, um, all residential campers are gonna have to submit a negative PCR, rapid PCR test um, within the last one to three days before arrival. Um, so we're not actually going to be accepting the home antigen tests. Um, this year. It still has to be a PCR. Um, and then health screenings before camp, um, those are going to be 14 days prior to arrival. Um, and then usually while your kiddos are actually here at camp, um, we're going to go through, you know, typically at meal times, we'll ask them just how are they feeling throughout the day. Um, a lot of times, <laughs> you know, with being outside so much, they do have symptoms like, you know, Maybe they'll feel a little hot or a little dehydrated and a little lethargic. Um, and so we try and differentiate between the two. But obviously, you know, we have a camp doctor that we discuss things like that with. Um, and then I believe day camp is slightly different in terms of health screenings. I believe that those health screenings are going to occur um, as students arrive in their cars. So there's like a daily check-in before you get out of your vehicle um, and campers are allowed in the vehicle. Um, as of now, masks are not required um, in Yukon facilities, but obviously with COVID, things are always changing. Um, and so we still do not require masks aboard our boats or outside on the shoreline. Um, but obviously, if your child chooses to wear a mask, that is fine. Some of our staff members do as well. Um, and so if your child does want to wear a mask, just make sure that you're providing them with enough to get through the week. Um, we recommend about three masks per day, um, just because we are going to be out in the field and so they get wet or dirty. I mean, we just want to make sure that your kids have enough. Um, and then lastly, uh, we obviously are going through all of the recommended cleaning guidelines by the CDC. Um, and so we have folks that come through the building at the end of every day um, and making sure that everything is sanitized um, and clean for your students. Ah, oh, here's the day camp. Yeah, vaccines are still required. I talked about the health screenings, each vehicle from the morning. Um, and then same thing goes with masking, not required as of now, um, but they can feel free to wear them if they do. Okay, so just wanted to share a couple of resources. So on our website, um, you'll be able to find a day camper handbook and also a residential camper handbook. Um, and there's lots of great information there, things that you need to know before camp, things that you should know during camp, ways to get in touch with your camper if you needed to. Um, and then um, just, pretty much for after camp would be we're going to be sending out a survey so we of course appreciate any feedback that you can share with us um, what we've been doing is we've been sharing photos throughout the week and we've been trying to do that um, so you can feel connected to what we're doing um, throughout each day of camp so let me just give you a little taste of what the camper handbook looks like um, again 
kind of set out what to bring. Those um, items that we showed on our Google slide deck are in the camper handbook as well. Um, and we have the same kind of setup for residential camp. And so these are posted right on our website and you'll be able to access all of this information. And then additionally, we have um, an FAQ page on our website. And so this is a great place where you can um, get additional information. Of course, you can um, give us a call. You can call the office and you can reach out to us directly. You could speak with the camp director or some of our um, office staff that can help answer questions as well. But at this time, we'd like to open it up to questions. Um, you're welcome to use the chat um, or if you feel more comfortable unmuting and asking your question that way, that would work as well. I'm gonna just switch to this screen for a moment so you can see ways that you can get in touch with us. We've got our um, main phone number as well as our email address. And then you can see contact information for the camp directors on here as well. Okay. So Leslie, are you on the call with us? Yep. She just uh, answered that question in the chat. A couple of people were asking if boosters are required. Um, and at this point, they are not required to be considered fully vaccinated. Um, another person asked if um, watches are allowed at camp. Yes, watchers, watches are allowed. Um, I will say smart watches are not um, permitted. Um, I suppose you could bring one if it's not connected to a phone. Uh, we consider our camps to be a device-free zone. Um, day camps, you can have a phone in your backpack, but we prefer to be the, the contact with parents for day camps. Residential camps, we don't want any devices there at all. And the reason for that is um, we really want to keep the kids, you know, immersed in what's going on here. Sometimes phones can become um, a distraction and often they lead to greater homesickness uh, because, you know, kids are checking in on what their friends are doing and they feel like they're missing out or they, you know, getting lots of texts from people and they, they sort of pull, feel pulled in two directions. Um, the other reason too is we want to make sure that um, the students are talking to the adults that are with them. If they have something that they need or they're feeling a little sad, you know, I want them to talk to us um, and make sure that um, they're getting their needs met with the adults that are with them. Um, that does not mean that uh, you have to cut off contact with them. Um, so they are allowed to call home in the evening time. We um, give them an opportunity to do that. Uh, but when we call home, uh, phone calls will always start with a staff member. So we'll just say, hey, uh, your child wants to talk for a little while. Um, here they are. And so you can talk for a little while and then we end phone calls with you too. That way, if your camper shares something with you that you feel that we ought to know, uh, you have an opportunity to tell us as well. Um, I think I, I scroll. I have to scroll down. Um, uh, the box air cleaner. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I think probably an air purifier of some kind. Um, I think that I, I don't know how noisy that would be um, in a bunk room. Um, since bunks will be shared with other campers, um, I think that might have to be a case by case thing. I'm, I'm not actually sure how to answer that, but um, it really would, I think, depend on, you know, how much it might disturb the sleep of other campers. Um, Kindle readers, um, if is like a paper white, I think that's okay, but anything that can connect to the internet would probably be a no-go. Regular old uh, books, though, always welcome. We'll give kids some time to, to read some good old-fashioned paperbacks or hardcover books um, if they want to read before they go to bed. Um, the iodine tablets are because we are within the fallout zone of the nuclear power plant in Niantic. Um, so the iodine tablets, uh, potassium iodide, um, there is some research indicating that if you are within the fallout zone and you're a young person, um, taking that within a certain amount of time um, of exposure will reduce the amount of uh, radiation being absorbed into the system. Um, we don't anticipate a meltdown, <laughs> um, but it is something that we always keep on hand for our campers in the event that some emergency occurs. Um, I saw a question about cameras. Um, cameras are totally okay. 
Um, we've had some students bring disposable cameras in the past, and I think an underwater or a GoPro camera would, would be great as well. Um, another thing that we do as a staff, um, me being obsessive about it, is taking photos. Um, so we take photos all the time, and we actually set up a Google Photo album that we share with um, all of the parents um, on Sunday so they can kind of check into it every day and see what their camper has been up to. Um, but they, yes, they're totally okay to bring their own cameras. I think we're up to date. I don't think we missed any. If anybody feels more comfortable unmuting and asking a question, we'd welcome that as well. Oh, Nicole had a great question about snacks. Yeah, residential campers, um, uh, we, we ask that you send um, snacks that your child will like. We provide snacks as well. Uh, but if you have a really picky kid and they won't like something that we're providing, um, that's great. One thing we do require, though, is that we don't store those snacks in the bunk rooms because we've had issues with ants before. So uh, we want to make sure that we are storing those snacks um, in a location where the, the ants are not going to find it. Oh, absolutely. All dietary restrictions. Um, since we are, our food is catered by the University of Connecticut Dining Services, um, they've seen it all uh, with their college students. So we have gluten-free options. We have options for just about any allergy you could imagine. Um, we also have um, kosher and halal options um, for different eating um, restrictions and, and options. Yep, I'll just add to that, Debbie, that we ask um, that you let us know about those um, you know, dietary restrictions ahead of time, not on Sunday at check-in, so the kitchen staff can be prepared. We can do lower sodium options as well. Yep. Uh, there are four bunks in each room. We usually try to keep um, the bunk rooms to three campers each, um, but depending on um, the enrollment, we may have up to four campers in a bunk. <laughs> well, Kim, um, I, I don't think that we're going to find Nemo at this camp. Uh, we do sometimes get some tropical accidentals um, in our trawl late summer. Um, they get caught in the Gulf Stream and make their way up here, but uh, we've never caught a clownfish yet. <laughs> so we live uh, not near the ocean bug spray for when they're outside. Is it super buggy? Be. It's usually not too bad. There's one location where we get the little green head flies. Those are just the worst. So um, yeah, if you'd like to bring bug spray, yeah, we recommend that. Mosquitoes, not so much. But. Okay, did I miss any? Um, I see something about motion sickness. Um, if you know your child gets seasick, we have... Um, uh, a way for you to send medications with camp with that to camp with them. Um, it does require um, some paperwork um, signed by your doctor. Um, so we uh, at our camp do self administration. So that mean does not mean that your child is responsible for maintaining that medication or knowing how much to take. The the camp staff are all trained in administration of medication. Um, but basically we will provide the dose to your students. So all of those forms can be found on our website to be completed by the doctor. And so all medications coming to camp need to be in their original container. So um, just no pills and Ziploc bags. It needs to be the, the can container that they came in, either a pill bottle or, or the, you know, the box with the blister pouches inside. Um, and then um, the paperwork signed by the doctor authorizing us um, to provide that medication. Yes, that is true, Cheryl. Also for vitamins, um, we that's still considered a medication. Even over-the-counter medications um, need to have that form filled out by a doctor. Yeah. So anything with an active ingredient is usually what I what I tell um, tell people about. So that goes for topical things as well. Um, any ointments or anti-itch or anything like that. I just saw a question about the lights out bedtime routine. 
um, typically lights out depending on the age group. We usually say around 10, um, but a lot of times, you know, if kiddos are really tired, sometimes we'll bump it up just if we had a long day. Um, it's not very strict. We just ask that students begin to, or campers kind of go into their rooms. Um, and then I let them kind of mingle with one another. Um, but our hope is that they're not, you know, keeping other campers up. We want them to get at least, you know, a good eight hours of sleep because these are really long days that they're going to have at camp. Okay. Um, I saw a question about um, if your student gets a headache. Um, so, oh, Debbie answered it right there. But yeah, Motrin, ibuprofen, all those things also need an act or a uh, form. Uh, sunscreen is not, um, but it is important if you're, um, which medication you bring. So if your doctor puts like um, the name brand, like um, Tylenol, um, then you can't just bring a generic version of that, which would be acetaminophen. Um, although if they put acetaminophen, you can bring generic or um, the name brand. So it's a little tricky. The, the state likes to give us lots of rules. Um, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to call us and double check on any of that stuff. I see a question here about um, alarm clocks. We have alarm clocks in the room, but we also do a, a wake up routine with campers. So um, interns and Amy will be knocking on doors if they don't wake up to their alarm clocks. Um, so breakfast is served at 8 a.m. Um, so we'll be waking the kids up um, between 7 and 7.30 so that they can get up um, and head over to breakfast. So breakfast is going to be served in our cafeteria. We have um, the kitchen that was shown in the video. Um, and so food will be served right in there. So it's really just a short walk down the hallway. Um, I also saw a question about um, the bunks. So I know we had already mentioned that there can be up to four people in a bunk. Um, they will not be co-ed within the bunk room, um, but there will be kind of a mix um, on the floor. So we have two different floors of hostels and each floor has its um, two separate bathrooms, one for um, males and one for females. And then upstairs is where we have our single use bathrooms um, that they could use as well. I think we're caught up. Okay. I don't know if you said this too, Marissa, just to add, but because the floors are co-ed, typically there's a male and a female intern on both floors. I want to correct myself though. I, I said breakfast is served at eight. Breakfast is served at 8.30. <laughs> So at 10 o'clock bedtime for a 7.30, a wake up time, you're going to get some tired kids back on Friday afternoon, <laughs> but very happy tired kids. Great. So we'll give one last call to questions here. Again, if you feel like unmuting, you're welcome to do so, or you can pop it right in the chat. Um, if something comes to mind later, um, you can always reach out um, by phone or email, and we'd be happy to answer any other questions that come up. Um, again, we are recording this, so we'll share this on our website, so you can use this as a resource if um, you need to refer back to it. I see another one that just popped up in the chat here. And I'm going to assume that if needed, you have this on hand, but um, in case somebody, one of some of the females need products, I'm assuming you have something on hand in case they don't have enough. Yep, absolutely. Correct. Thank you. Um, okay, I see a few more questions coming in. So can an adult come in to help make the beds? Um, and the answer is yes. So if you need to help your uh, camper get settled, um, we will allow that. We, we were being a little more particular in years past with COVID, but yes, we will let folks come in to help get campers set up. Um, 
Let's see what else here. Pickup time for a residential camp. Debbie or Marissa, do you have that one? Uh, four o'clock. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. L last year we had we had done a staggered pickup and drop off. So we're like wanting to make sure we say the right the right um, <laughs> times for this. I had to think for a second. Uh, yeah. Um, Usually, it, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was gonna address um, Jaden's question about the meals. So if you have more to add about um, pickup. I was, all I was gonna say is that um, we're, we usually send an email out like a week or two prior to um, your week of camp, just as some kind of reminders and that will have the official times on it as well. That's all I was gonna say. So, so uh, Jaden's asking about the meals and I can see that there are other, um, some picky eaters. I do not have um, a menu that goes out um, for the most part, we serve the same thing each week, but you know we reserve the right to kind of, um, if there is a shortage of some ingredient or something, the, the kitchen can substitute things. Um, for the most part, um, it's going to be, um, you know, the things like chicken fingers and um, pasta and meat sauce. Um, and uh, of course, vegetarian and vegan options are always available if you're not into meat. Um, or I eat animal products. Um, in the morning, we try to serve a hot breakfast. Um, uh, for all of our breakfasts, I think there's one breakfast where they they get a, a cold breakfast, like a muffin or um, some cereal, but those things are um, usually an option, um, even when we're serving something like an egg sandwich or waffles. Um, so it's kid-friendly food. Uh, we have lots of um, feedback about previous years. And so um, if there's something, if you're concerned that your kid is not going to eat our food, uh, we also have on hand, we usually have like some Chef Boyardee or some um, Easy Mac available. So like if, you're, if your kid says, I absolutely hate barbecue chicken sandwiches, um, we have something on hand. So we're not going to let your kid go hungry. Uh, we've got extra stuff on hand. And that's something also that you can send with your camper if you know that um, they're going to be very choosy about what they eat. You can send them, if they love Top Ramen or something like that, you can send them with some packages of that. And so we have it on hand. And we have you know, access to microwaves. We don't have access to the stoves that are in the kitchen or anything like that, but we have ways to heat things up, you know, burritos or whatever um, you know your kid's gonna eat. <laughs> um, I think Arabella is asking about um, if a camper gets sick enough um, during residential camp that they need to go home. Um, so, uh, what we would do then would uh, be to, you know, take the kid, um, you know, get them away from the rest of the group. Uh, we would keep an adult with them so that they're not all lonely or scared or anything like that. But we'd be in touch with you um, about their symptoms and um, then we'd have you come and pick them up, um, you know, depending on the advice of our camp doctor. Um, we may or may not ask you to um, get a COVID test just to be sure um, about exposures in the camp. Um, but we are in contact with our camp doctor about, you know, okay, is this symptom something that requires them to go home? Um, or is there, um, you know, is, is this just um, other symptoms? So, um, yes, we can also um, look in the camper handbook. All of our protocols about um, sending kids home from camp are in there. So both day camp and residential camp. Um, it's spelled out really clearly in there as well. So. Um, details about what to do if your kid feels sick at camp. You can send um, snacks that have nuts in them. Like we said, we don't allow them in the bunk room so we can prevent exposure to those who have nut allergies. All of the food that is prepared in the kitchens um, at Project O is completely nut free uh, just to protect those that have those allergies. All right, last call, any questions? <laughs> any final questions that we might be able to answer for you? All right, well, if not, thank you so much for joining us. We're really looking forward to kicking summer off. And again, if something else comes up, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we would be happy to respond to email or return a call.
So thank you so much, everybody. And we look forward to a great summer season. Would one of the staff um, stop the recording?